Hi there. Welcome to Lady Pilgrim, where I like to share about practical godliness and my walk with the Lord. Now, welcome back. Um, I know it's been a while. I don't really have a schedule that I post. Um, I just kind of, if I have something to share, I record it and then I post it. And then that sometimes kind of, you know, can make kind of a gap. <laughs> um, I do hope that I can be more um, organized with this at some point, <laughs> um, but there's a lot of other things, um, that I kind of have to, well, not a whole lot, but certain things that I need to, that need my attention, and so this kind of takes, um, some of the back burner sometimes, but anyways, I am still very, um, excited to be able to share things and, um, study things and, um, bring them up here and, you know, hopefully encourage someone or um, bring some better clarity under or understanding about something. But I don't want that to replace your, what God can show you and in, through your own study. So this is not like anything I share is not to replace any of your own personal studies or understandings. But if it can help you understand something better, you know, if it brings something else to the table that you had not considered before, then, you know, that's kind of what I hope to bring with this. So with, without, um, you know, going too much longer, I will start in with what I wanted to share with uh, about today. Um, so I had this notification on my phone and it was the verse of the day for one of my Bible apps, and it was for Lamentations 3, verses 21 to 23. These are pretty famous verses, and one that I have known and that has encouraged me for, uh, for a while, you know, for a few years. So it says, This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So, these, like, these verses have been a lot um, of encouragement for me over the years, as I said, as I have said. And, but the main part that I focused on was verse 22 and 23. Which, you know, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. And I would kind of emphasize verse 23 more than the rest, but they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Now, of course, just this on its own is like really encouraging. And it's why I focus a lot on it. And I'm sure, you know, many Christians focus on um but for some reason, verse 21 really stuck out to me when I saw the verse on my screen where it says, This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. So it seems silly, like it's not a very long verse, and it's a precursor to those two very encouraging verses. And you would think, well, you would just group them all together. But it really stood out to me this time because I have struggled a lot throughout my life in general and as a Christian as well, unfortunately, with this mindset of kind of taking everything and everything's kind of connected. Now, what I mean by that is when I wake up in the morning, Sometimes, you know, more times than I would like to admit, I wake up and it's almost as if it's just a continuation of the day before. And if I did something that I'm not very proud of, it's like I drag it with me to the next day. And some of you might be able to relate to that because I know it's a big problem for a lot of us and that's where a lot of anxiety and depression comes from and 
grief, um, you know, just grieving of our own condition. But this is not healthy at all. In Matthew um, it's chapter 6, I think, verse 33, it, yes, uh, no, sorry, Matthew 6, 34, I'll read 33 as well, but emphasize 34. So verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So seek first the kingdom of God, and you know everything else that you need will be added. Verse 34, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So there's so much to this verse in relating to what I am talking about. Because if God, Jesus told us, you know, don't think about tomorrow. Don't worry, care, obsess about what tomorrow holds. But focus on today and what you can do, you know, at this very moment. Wouldn't it apply for kind of forgetting and putting the things that are in the past, leaving them there, <laughs> and not obsessing about them or focusing on them or dragging it with you into the next day? Because if... if his mercies are new every morning, and his compassions, they don't fail, his faithfulness is great, then why are we dragging the, the, the previous day with us into the next? And, you know, this can take time to kind of overcome, and, you know, I feel like I'm so much further than I would like to be in my ability to move on from the previous day or you know anything from the past but you know i think a big part of what's important in this is just being willing to have god show you these things there's in psalms says seek uh, search me O god and know my heart try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting that is it's a very humbling thing when you really think about what that prayer entails. When you ask God, okay, search the darkest corners of my soul that I don't even know are there, or that I don't, e that I don't even know are dark, basically. And it's like, go there, please, and bring it out and, and, and help me to know these things and, you know, repent of them and, you know, have you, Father, change me and so that I can have everlasting life, you know, so that we can have the character of Christ, which will bring us, um, which is only by being changed into his image that we can really be saved. It's, you know, nothing that we can physically do um, with our hands, um, but it's like complete surrender day to day so i just wanted to touch on this and i've been talking for way longer than i wanted to or anticipated but i just i just propose to you to think like are you dragging the past with you every day you wake up and while god is wanting to forgive you and you know, he forgives and he forgets. Like he, oh, there's this uh, concept where it says, um, you know, he, as far as east is from the west, you know, the east and the west will never touch. Like the east is over here and the west is over here and they can't ever connect. Like it doesn't work. And so he, he remembers our sin no more. If we truly believe, that's the thing, that's the difference. If we, if we believe that God has forgiven us, then we can rest assured that he has. But if we keep holding on to the things that we have asked forgiveness for and don't believe that he's forgiven us, then it's not that he hasn't forgiven us. 
because he has but we 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 basically condemn ourselves and hold on to a burden that he's not asked us to hold on to and so this was just really i was just really excited when i read this because for some reason i just it never really clicked you know i i get encouraged okay yes his mercies are new every morning his compassions fail not and his faithfulness is great and you know i'm encouraged by this but often i would find myself with a with very little hope and if i'm truly believing these promises then i should have hope <laughs> instead of being discouraged you know it's like oh you know I, I i could easily wake up and just really feel sorry for myself and kind of hold on to that but claim god's promise of oh his he's so merciful you know his this morning his mercies are new i can okay praise the lord but deep down i'm still carrying guilt or shame or something negative with me from the previous day that i'm not fully surrendered to him so i'm not truly claiming and living out those promises it, this should you know just this whole principle should give us so much hope because if god doesn't hold on to our mistakes if we've asked him to forgive us then why should we hold on to anything um, that is not joy peace hope um, contentment and you know anything else um, Philippians 4 verse 8 says whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report you know, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Not, oh, if there's any shame or discouragement or grief or guilt from the previous day, think on these things. No, he wants us to forget about that and move on. The same that he doesn't want us to worry about the next day and not even focus on what he was he wants to have us to do today so i hope this you know kind of makes sense and is encouraging and is thought provoking and kind of brings a an angle that you might not have thought of before because apparently i haven't <laughs> so that's kind of why i wanted to share it and i was very excited to be able to and you know i've been wanting to record a video for a while and you know with something that i've that i had shared and that god had showed me and um often if i don't do it right away i can forget it even if i have my notes my mind just seems to struggle so i'm just really grateful that i had the opportunity to to do this right now and um if you stayed on until now i commend you <laughs> for your attention and uh, patience and I hope you were blessed and um, yeah, hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.